Okay, so um, I was talking to myself for a little while because the video recorder turned off and per usual I never know that so I was just going on and on. But anyways, <laughs> now we're back to where we left off or where the video cut off. And um, as I was saying, when you want to self-publish a book, you need files to upload to create space. Those should be done in InDesign, so you can take any PowerPoint, which he had his book on PowerPoint, and you can put it on to InDesign, and then after several edits, and Stephen taught me what, how, how a really good book is put together, and that's with many, many edits. And um, then after you've done that, you submit your file, you buy your number, so that your book has a number, like all the other books. And it's like, what, $60, something like that. And then you advertise it on Amazon, and they have that connection between CreateSpace and Amazon. So that's how you would buy the book, is through Amazon, which is what you do. And then if you want to resell the book after you've bought it for a little bit more money, then you can do that. Or you can just have people go straight to Amazon to buy your book. And that's what we did, or he did. And I did the whole enhancing the photography. He had a photographer do his photographs and I just increased the resolution and made it so that they would fit the the area where he wanted his photographs because they're kind of large on the page. And there you go. And the book is about Dalu, probably the very first book on Dalu in the English language or at all. I don't know. I don't want to misrepresent it's not my jam. That's their jam. And here's some abstract art for small children so that they get exposed early on. So I was trying to make some, some good stuff for them. Also an illustrator. And some package. Package design, which is something that we touch on at Art Institute. I went to the one in Fort Lauderdale. Here's some patterns used to create art, also through Illustrator. This is a character that I created with his little patterned outfit, also in Illustrator. And you'll find these characters in Redbubble. And some stories that I made. So these are kind of um, the uh, story the storyboards that go with my story. And this one took place in India. So you might see buildings that might look like they are from India or in India and other artifacts. This is a drawing of a drawing, more simplified version. And here's the original drawings for the storyboard and an attempt to make a web page for a friend who owns Garage 47. Terrific mechanic garage in Sacramento. And my photography. I was using an SX Canon 40. And we also in Art Institute did some mock uh, stuff like this is um, advertisement for a movie with characters. And, of course, all of that creative content is mine. And those are pictures of my kids, actually. And then some more photography on the SX-40 Canon uh, down in Fort Lauderdale. And I took um, an icon or logo design class. So this was a billboard attempt at making a billboard. And here is more of the creative arts that I am earlier did. I went into creative, into dis digital design later, but I started out with sculpture and drawing. And here I did some painting. And this is shaking, I'm sorry. I'm having to uh, hold it up against the computer. And then I made this as a button with my face on the Mona Lisa. That will take you to my blogs. So if you want to see the Entertainer Reel, 
on the Wix, wixsite.com. You can find me there and see my other blog page. So this is my first page. But the blog page has blogs. And here is an animation that I did while I was at school at the ARC where I took 2D animation and I was doing 3D modeling and I took part in a 3D modeling animation short production class so I got to see what's involved in making 3D animation production. And that was a lot of fun and then here let me adjust the phone. Uh, some art for logo, packaging, wrappers. This is a very popular cookie. So I made it into kind of a Art Nouveau, Art Deco package design and then some other stuff that you see on packages. And then at the bottom of the first page, you see the two buttons, the home page and the blog page button, and then where you can make comments and where I'm located, which is in Sacramento. So there you go. There is my Wix.com. I don't know if you can see that. But um, that's not going anywhere. This is going somewhere, maybe. And then some other links because I also give conversation classes online. Here's my line drawing. A little example of that. People are asking for an online portfolio. So, I hope this doesn't go anywhere. Because this is all I have right now. And, and this is why I'm trying to capture as much as I can. Some of it's very old, but I'm very sentimental, and this is kind of a long journey, so I don't want to let go of any of it. I don't know if you can relate, but with so many ups and downs in these careers, oh boy, and I've been through a lot of them, you just don't want to take any more hits than you have to. I mean, I've had things destroyed, broken in shipping, broken in display, not been reimbursed, just hits. So, you kind of get to where you want to hoard and not lose any more things. And all the moving around in the beginning. I must have lost a ton of equipment on the road. So yeah, being an artist is not an easy thing to do. It's very difficult. And you try to invest in yourself and not hang on to things. But if people want to see what you've made, it means you have to hold on to some of these things, whether you want to or not. That's hanging in a friend's house. I do have a list of collectors because I didn't want to go the studio way. I did not want to work through an artist studio in DC where I'm from. They were very snooty and they were not kind to the artist or the person coming in to buy. And I have a very strong sense of justice and I didn't like that. So I didn't want to go that route. So I just, found homes for my things. This one's sitting in someone's home. This one's sitting in someone's home. I have a long list of collectors. This one's sitting in someone's home. It's sitting in the home of someone who put my work out front in their front lawn in a very prominent place. And it was a very good testimony of me and who I am and my work. And I was very grateful. So one day I planted this inside their screen door so that way they would find it when they got home from work because that piece must have sat on their lawn for over 10 years and I thought what better way to say thank you 
than to give them another piece of my work because they obviously showed me and everyone else that they like my work so they deserved another one and I gave them also um, a duplicate of a pastel but they were very good to me and I'm very grateful for that I'm going to stop this and start it up later